if you want to get started with Spring Boot, the Spring Initializer has got your back. It's a simple online tool that allows you to pre-configure or bootstrap a brand new Spring Boot application by selecting from dozens of different Spring and companion projects as well. When you're done, it gives you a nice little zip file to download, and then you can easily import that into your IDE of choice, be it IntelliJ, VS Code, Eclipse, or just the file system where you can work with Note. Pat, working with the Spring Initializer, showing you how to create a Spring Boot project with the Spring Initializer by using some of the most commonly used starters, and then bringing that resulting file into your IDE. That is what we're going to do next. Okay, I've got my glasses on, so you know I mean business. And I've also got start.spring.io up, which takes me to the Spring Initializer. Now, I do hear that the country that that IO domain name extension is based on uh, sunk into the ocean or something. So that URL may very well change in the near future, but right now it works. And a very handsome screen is presented to me. I'm asked what my build tool is going to be. I want to use Maven. It asked me my language. Groovy's actually going away. God bless you, Groovy. Kotlin, named after that island just off the coast of St. Petersburg. Russia is one of the most amazing languages out there, but I'm a Java guy, so I'm going to stick with boring old Java. As for the group name, I'm going to make mine com.mcnz.spring. The artifact ID will be initial Iser demo. Did I spell it right? Well, they don't spell it right, so I've got no obligation to. And look at that. The spring initializer doing me dirty on the package name there. That's what I want to keep it as. Make jar not war for the packaging. Java 17 is good for me. That's the minimum for spring boot nowadays. That's all interesting, but it's not nearly as interesting as these dependencies. This is what you came for. You click add dependencies and look at all of these available dependencies. There's Lombok, there's Spring Web, there is stuff support for template engines, security, JDBC, Spring Data, you name it. There's even a whole bunch of stuff to support Spring AI in here if you want to connect to chat GPT or do some of that stuff. Well, they've got all of that support in here too. Now there's a couple of starters that I always like to add. I always like to add in, well, I'm going to throw in Lombok, right? I'll click that, click add dependencies again. I'll look for Spring Web because I want to create a RESTful API. And then what else? For actuators, you should always add the actuator starter to your projects. I've got a tutorial on actuators. And if you don't know about them, check out that tutorial. They are amazing. And I don't know, maybe a database support. So I'll throw H2 in there. It's much better than H1, just not as good as H3. That is added in. And there we go. We've got four dependencies added to our project, a database, web, everything looks fantastic here. You know what? Maybe I'll even throw in batch support. You never know when you've got some batch processing to do. That gives me a nice number, uh, five primary number. I like it. Um, and that makes our, our project a little complicated. Okay. And there we go. Now you can actually click explore here and it will show you all of the code that goes into that POM file. So that's pretty impressive on the left hand side actually shows you the full structure of your project. If you wanted to browse around in there, I'm going to close that. You've also got the share option. So you can copy that link, put it onto Twitter, share it on Facebook, send an instant message to your mom. I'm sure she'll be interested in all of the Spring Boot initializer stuff that you're doing. But more likely, you want to click generate, which is going to download a zip file to your downloads folder. And that has got the whole bytecode embodiment of your project in there. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to take a look at that file. Now I'm not going to leave it there. I'm actually going to copy that file and move it into a folder I've got for all my spring stuff called spring stuff. And I'm going to paste it there. And after pasting it there, I'm going to right click and say seven zap extract here. And boom, the whole project gets exported. If I want to go in here and take a look, you can see in the root, there's that palm file. 
And then there's the SRC, Sourcey, Source folder, a test folder, resources, application properties, all of the great things you'd expect to find in a Spring Boot application. Now, once we've got this, the next thing we have to do is bring this into our IntelliJ, bring it into our VS Code, bring it into our Eclipse, and that is what we're going to do next. Now I'm going to import this into my IDE. It's worth just remembering what folder this is in. It's in a folder called Understore Spring Stuff Initializer Demo, and in that folder I can find my POM file with that information. I can import this into any IDE that I like. Now, I'm going to import this into Eclipse, and I know what you're thinking, oh, it's a Boomer IDE, and oh, it's in light mode, I know. Roast me in the comments if you like. But the process is really the same, whether it's IntelliJ or VS Code or what. All you have to do is just do a, a file import. Here I'm importing an existing Maven project. I click Next. And then I just have to browse for the project on my file system. There it is, Spring Stuff, Initializer Demo. That's the folder that I've got the POM. So I'm going to say Select Folder. It recognizes the POM, and all I have to do is say Finish and boom, this project is brought into Eclipse. Now you can't see it thinking about it in the bottom right hand corner there. It's gonna take a little while for Maven to bring in all the dependencies that are listed in that POM file. And once it's done, you can mosey on over here and explore that project. You'll notice that a file is created for you that's got that Spring Boot application annotation on it. Usually we leave this this file alone and do our configuration and stuff in other files. But, you know, uh, this is valid for writing some code. So why don't we actually turn this Spring Boot application entry point class into a, a REST controller as well? And the way you do that is you just say REST controller. That's how easy it is to do stuff in Spring. Now, do you see that red X there? See that red X? You need to get your eyes checked because that is a white X on a red background. But that's just telling me that I haven't imported my import. So Control Shift O, you see that REST controller coming in. And now we're allowed to do some REST stuff if we want. I just want to print Hello World in the browser on a get mapping invocation. So you just say, okay, you want to do a get mapping? And I'm like, yeah, I want to do a mapping for slash Hello World. It says, okay, you can do that. You just got to write a method in order to support that. And I'm like, I can do that. Public string, say hello. And then in this method, just return the string, hello world, with an exclamation point, semicolon at the end. I, do you see that red X there? I'm still going to do my control shift O, control S. And I mean, we're well on our way to creating RESTful APIs. By the way, I got a full tutorial that shows you how to create a, a RESTful CRUD application. If you're interested, uh, it's pretty cool. It's about an hour long, but we don't have that kind of time here. I just want to run this application. In order to run this application, all I have to do is right click on the project and say, run as a Java application. It's going to say to you, well, what file do you want to have as the entry point for this application? I'm just going to select initializer demo application, because that's the one that we created. I'm going to click OK. And Eclipse is going to think about this for a little bit. It's going to go, OK, Spring has got everything auto configured. By the way, if you want to know how it does auto configuration, yeah, you guessed it. I got a tutorial on that too. We will allow some access on the required ports. So click OK there. If I scroll over here, it looks like Tomcat is running. I see port 8080, my favorite port. Let's see what happens if we come over here and go to localhost colon 8080 and say, what was it? Hello world? Was that what we had in the get mapping? It was. So if we type this in and click enter, does it work? Boom. It works. And we've actually got our RESTful API working on localhost 8080 slash hello world mapping to the get mapping in the class that we put that REST controller annotation on. So there you go. That is just how easy it is to create a project using the Spring Initializer and bring it into an IDE like Eclipse.